Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Four Weeks of Famous Philosophers, in which we're looking at a new philosopher every single day for the whole month of October. In this video, we're going to be looking at John Stuart Mill, champion of utilitarianism, defender of freedom of speech, and the greatest English-speaking philosopher of the 19th century. Now, John Stuart Mill is probably best known as one of the first proponents and defenders of utilitarianism. Following Jeremy Bentham, he defended a unique consequentialist view of ethics, which is still studied to this day. However, he also outlined the logical basis for the scientific method and the logic of induction, and provided powerful arguments in favor of naturalism in opposition to Kant. Furthermore, he gave one of the most stirring defenses of freedom of speech in his book on liberty. I highly encourage you to check it out if you're interested. It's not that long, and it's pretty cool. Now, John Stuart Mill was born in 1806. He was groomed his whole life to be a philosopher by his father and then later Jeremy Bentham. Before the age of eight, he had read Plato, Euclid, and Herodotus. His father kept him very sheltered, not allowing to, him to have friends his own age outside of his siblings. He was sent to study with Bentham and other liberals. He struggled with depression at this point in his life, as he realized that inventing a perfect, just society, the life goal laid out for him by his family, would not necessarily bring him happiness. He worked for much of his life for the East India Company, and in some of his works defended British colonial rule in India, claiming the people there were not civilized, but barbarous, and needed to be ruled. That may seem quite colonialist in a sense, but Mill actually said that they used to be civilized, had become barbarous, and the British were just trying to get them back on the path to civilization. Perhaps not the best defense of what he's saying, but it was what he did. After marriage, he became even more of an outspoken advocate for women's rights than he was before. When he became an MP in Parliament, he was the first advocate of women's suffrage, and he was eventually made the godfather of Bertrand Russell before he finally died in 1873. Now, Mill attempted to provide a logical structure for science. Though he admitted that Hume's problem of induction made it so that science could not prove anything with certainty, he contended that our scientific axioms had been arrived at not by some innate ability, as Kant did, but rather through testing and generalization of those results in the same way we might get scientific results otherwise. Now, Mill is probably best known for his ethical theory known as utilitarianism. This contends that the right thing to do is what creates the most happiness for the most people, or the greatest utility. Utilitarianism is a form of consequentialism since it judges the actions of people based on the consequences of those actions, not on the intentions of the people. While other elements of Mill's philosophy may have faded away, utilitarianism is still touted as one of the three major ethical positions, along with Kant's deontology and Aristotle's virtue ethics. Mill's On Liberty, as noted previously, includes a strong defense of the right to free speech. For Mill, if all of the elements of a debate could be freely brought out into the public sphere, a rational conclusion could be reached. While censorship of opinions made this impossible, and actually even censorship of wrong opinions could then give credence to those opinions because you're not letting them have their fair airing in a public sphere. Mill thought these freedoms were important in order to protect a majority from silencing a minority that might have different opinions than the majority in this new world of more democratic governments. Therefore, I give you John Stuart Mill, champion of utilitarianism, defender of freedom of speech, and the greatest English-speaking philosopher of the 19th century. Next up, we're going to be looking at 
one of my favorite philosophers to object to, William James. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.